A min-term list is a compact way to describe the functionality of a logic circuit by simply listing the row numbers that correspond to an output of one in the truth table. So as an example, let's say we had the truth table where we had two inputs, A and B, we had an output F, and let's just say we had 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, and the outputs were 0, 1, 1, 0. And we, this is the truth table, this is the functional description of how the circuit operates. Well, we saw that we could write the min term for each and every output that corresponds to a one. So we can write a min term for row one, and we can write a min term for row two, and those would simply be A naught and it would B, and then we'd have A and it would B naught. And these two min terms are product terms that would assert for one and only one uh, input code. And the subscripts came from the fact that the row numbers were simply 0, 1, 2, and 3. So the subscripts were the row numbers. But this, it's a very methodical way because it's a very methodical approach to creating a logic circuit uh, because we know that with these min terms, all we have to do then is put them into a sum of products logic expression where this would be min term 1, this would be min term 2, and they're or together, and that would produce this truth table. But as the truth tables get larger and larger, sometimes uh, the min terms get larger, sometimes the logic diagram gets uh, excessively large. <coughs> and so a min term list gives us a way to describe the functionality using a more of an equation uh, form factor. And the way we do that is by writing the output variable or the output like this, f is equal to, and then we use the capital sigma symbol to represent that this is going to be a minterm list. And then what we need to do is for the minterm list, we want to put as subscripts the input variables comma delimited. So what this tells me right here is that capital sigma says, oh, I'm, in a, I'm now producing a minterm list, and a and b say that there's two input variables, and a is on the left and b is on the right. The reason it's important that A is on the left and B is on the right is because it dictates how the row numbers correspond to the actual input codes. So for example, if B was on the left and A was on the right, then the input code for row 1 would be 0, 1. That would be where B was a 0. So it's very important to know at, when you list the row number how that maps to which input variable is a 0 and a 1, and you have to keep track which one's on the left and which one's on the right in the truth table. <coughs> So once we do that, uh, now we know A is on the left, B is on the right. It's also very important to put that comma because in digital systems we're going to have a lot of different signals. And if I just put A, B, that could be a, sig a signal name by itself. So A, B could, is a perfectly legal name. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're simply going to list the row numbers of every row in the truth table that has an output of a 1. So we come along and we say 1, Two, and that is my midterm list. Okay? Now it's very easy to scale this. So for example, if I had a three input truth table, so let's say I had A, B, C, and I had an F right here, and I wrote this out 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and I had 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, I had eight input codes. And then I had an output, so let's say we had 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. All I need to do now is I could describe the same piece of information. Let me put the row over here, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I could write this equivalent functional description by saying F is equal to, and I do capital sigma, A comma B comma C. That tells me I have three input variables and A's on the left in the truth table for the row notation. And all I'm going to do now is list row 1, row 2, row 3, comma delimited, and row 5. So this right here is the exact same information as the truth table. So a midterm list is a very compact way. The reason they call it a midterm list is because since it corresponds to an output of 1, we also know that, they're, that when you use min terms, they also correspond to an output of a 1. So it makes it very simple to go from a min term list directly into a canonical sum of products logic expression and then a logic diagram.